Alrighty, that was Megadeth live at Rockham Ring last weekend and of course we had Rockham Ring and Dynamo Festival happening the same weekend in Europe. So tonight at Headbangers Ball we're just bringing, bringing you a festival frenzy and we'll be covering uh, Dynamo in full next week. So first up tonight, joining me at this frenzy of festival festivities, I've got Sepultura, I've got Max and Igor here. And actually guys, welcome back to the show. I haven't seen you for ages, so it's really nice to see you again. How are you doing? Good, still alive. <laughs> now you're actually here at Dynamo to um, do a one-off nail bomb gig and you'll be finding out all about that next week when Biohazard interview nail bomb but actually just tonight we're going to catch up on some Sepultura news and uh, you have been pretty low profile recently but things are building up again aren't they? First of all we've got the release of the home video, could you tell us a little bit about that? That was the idea that we have to put up like a five, the last five years of the band into like a home video with all the video clips and a lot of back like cool backstage stuff, really underground stuff. There's some stuff with Jello Biafra in Brazil singing with us, some ritual stuff in Indonesia. It's like for a fan really like a special thing. So it's like it's called Third World Chaos and it takes you behind the scenes with Sepultura and maybe you see a few things that you might not expect. Yeah the the thing is, you know, it come from like one kid asking us, you know, saying that the only video that he ever saw it was that embryonic cells and we made all these videos and he couldn't get a hold of any of them you know and he was in New Zealand right yeah yeah this kid from New Zealand and then from that we said man you know we do all these videos all the time why not put it all in one tape they'll be able to get a hold of all of them It'd be cool you know and it kind of shows how Sepultura have grown over the last few years as well doesn't it yeah it's it's a combination there's there's some TV stuff you're in there as well <laughs> There's like all kinds of stuff, like I say, backstage stuff, stuff from TV. We make it real long, like over an hour, and so the kid, the person, the fan just don't buy just for the videos. When he buys it, he buys it up a whole, all kinds of different stuff together, so. So that's Sepultura, Third World Chaos. It's out on the 31st of July. Very quickly, also, you've started demoing for the new album, haven't you? Tell us a little bit about where you've got to with that. Yeah, we started working on Actually, we started in August, when we were touring Australia, we started writing riffs. Right now we have half of the album done, and it's it's coming along real easy, actually. Really like, uh, I don't know how to say, like, with actually less pressure than Chaos AD, on the writing at least, you know. We, we hopefully to enter studio September, and we're going to record some stuff in Brazil as well. Yeah, so I heard that there may be some stuff from the rainforest. That's, <laughs> that's, those are not rumors. <laughs> We don't know where in Brazil, it's a big country, but we want to put out some of the weird Brazilian roots recorded down there and stuff for the first time. And we heard a little rumor, I don't know if this is true, that the album might be called Roots. It's probably too early to say, is it? Yeah. I don't know, it's like, it's a, it's our favorite song right now. And uh, it, we think it's a strong name. So if, by the time we put the album out, if we don't find any cooler name, that might be it, you know? Well, we'll be the first to tell everybody in Europe the title of the new Sepultura album. So it might be out early next year, right? Yeah, we're hoping February. And we're hoping this time to go on a real tour for two years, like we did for Arise. Wow. We can play all the countries that, unfortunately, we didn't do in Chaos AD. Okay. We do this time. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to that. Thank you very much to Max and Igor for joining me here on our festival frenzy. And we're going to turn the clock back right now to Donington last year, and we're going to show you... Mud, mud, glorious mud. Well, a festival just wouldn't be the same without it, would it? We just saw Green Day live at Woodstock last summer with When I Come Around, and there was loads of mud flying around there, wasn't there? Anyways, we're here at Dynamo. We're bringing you festival festivities, festival mayhem. And right now, I'm going to hand you over to the Warrior Soul guys, and they're going to give you a backstage tour, take you behind the scenes at Dynamo 95. Over to Corey and Alex. Hello. Uh, this is MTV's Headbangers Ball, and you're in uh, a pensulent frenzy with us and MTV and Headbangers Ball. Now, look at this. That's the beer tent where all the record labels get all fucked up, and, they like, and then they talk shit. And the first thing you do is you hang out with some people that might do an interview with you, and then they talk shit to you for a while, and then they come up here and they get drinks. We get them for free. This. 
This is beer, boys and girls. And, and we, we drink it there, regularly. Guys. This is beer. These people drink it. I'm an alcoholic. I don't. So all you alcoholics out there, put this down. <laughs> right, and take something like this. <laughs> Preferably without anything else in it. This is like fine orange. <laughs> this is okay. I honestly don't know what this is. I've seen it before, but I've never been in there. I'm not sure. These seem to be the fortunate few. I don't know what they do in there. Do you have any observations? Well, these people are Can more... you help us with this? Well, I don't know. I've never been in there. It's a record company free beer. It? Oh, oh, it's a... Okay. Uh... This is obviously a bigger label. The coordinator has suddenly decided that right. this is now, These actually... people are more important than us. As you can see, they have a bigger tent. This is, means more record promotional dollars, boys and girls. Yeah. More money, more promotional dollars means more record sales, means you get a bigger tent and better quality beer. On to our next item. Now remember, we were in here, and I can't remember what we were doing exactly, but we were sitting... Oh, the restaurant. We, yes, all right. We were sitting here, and then these people came in with cameras, and they started taking pictures of us. And it was super fucking weird, because you're sitting behind there, and there's all these people taking pictures of you while you're sitting there. And the, see, the idea, boys and girls... Did that make sense? Huh? made a lot of sense. Now, the yeah. idea, boys and girls, is to look natural. Like, huh. you know, to come in here, just sit behind the table and look natural. Look, these guys here, right? They could be sitting, waiting in a press conference and being interviewed. There we go. Hey, guys. We might want to interview a couple of these guys. <laughs> Hi. The last time I was sitting there, I didn't know why I was there. Do you know why you're there now? Yeah. Why are you there now? Because I'm about to... Go sky high. Well, there you go. We are having fun. Oh, oh. Now, as you can see, this is the festival frenzy thing here. And any illicit substances that you might see on the table, it's just a prop. It's only a prop, boys and girls. It's not really real. It's just to make it look authentic. Don't worry about it. And all that, the white powder is really just baking soda. It's okay. Relax. This is coming from an alcoholic. You gotta understand that. Former alcoholic. Yes. Presently. Presently, yeah. Uh, we haven't done the restaurant yet. Oh, it's the restaurant. Let's go right into the it's restaurant. It's time for the restaurant. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> There's some real frenzy. <laughs> that was frenzy. <laughs> hey, see, boys and girls, that's where you see what happens when you, you know, drink. Uh, fucking. These are two chairs. Can't you just smell this? Oh. All right. Let me see a minute. This is. What are we a fucking travel log? This is great. This is cool. Oh, for fuck's sake. What on our way? Here. It's time for you to talk about the restaurant. Cause last night. We're boycotting this fucking restaurant. Now, see the All problem right. with the, the problem with uh, the problem with festival food. You walk up to the festival food area and you can just feel your arteries just running for cover. You know? It's, it's just, you can just see them just clogging up. But this is cool, because we're going to Britain next week, so we're getting ready. Our arteries are getting vibed up, ready for the really bold food. I'm allowed to say that. I'm British. Take a, British you're food boycotting sucks. this. I'm boycotting British food. No. Right, you have to have one of these. You know, you have to be a real celebrity to have one of these, right? If you don't get one of these, you get your little ass kicked out the door to eat the artery-ridden food. Now, let's go this way. <laughs> I think... <laughs> no, was it? We're getting to the bus. Yeah, no, yeah, it's time to go to the bus, actually. Because we're leaving in five minutes. Uh, What's the meaning of the hat? I don't know. What's underneath it? <laughs> Hair. Hair? Yeah. Let me see. Well, uh, Let me see, boys and no, girls. No brains. No brains. There is, there is no brains under there. This internet site over there is kind of happening actually. This is one of the new features of the festival. I think this is really cool. It's online. So if you want to be really cool and really super hip boys and girls, plug in, log on, tune in and get one of these fucking computer things. This is the really super scumby bar. This is for the people that don't have drink tickets. They're not really famous. They don't really care about being famous. It's just hanging out. Let's find somebody. 
You've got all these uh, press people that look like they're more rock stars than uh, any rock star would ever hope to be. You've got these little short guys that they're obviously going bald. I mean, it's 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 so obvious. Except they got like six pieces of hair that are going on. And they're walking around, but they got the sunglasses all hanging there. I mean, shave your head. You know. Well, I've never seen so many people from bands in one area. I mean, it's. I mean, I've never actually met Trouble before. I've seen them wandering around. Everybody who's anybody is here for, for the full three days as well. Not, you know, some people don't just turn up for an hour, uh, pose around a bit, and then go back to the hotel. There's genuinely been people here in the pouring rain up for the whole weekend, which is great. And it's nice to meet people um, from bands you've almost worshipped in the past. I mean, I've been talking to Lee Fedling, the bass player from Candlemas, and they are one of our biggest influences, and it's just been absolutely wonderful. Let's talk to these people here. Hey! What's the re what are you doing here? Uh, we're from Open Air for, for Madball. Are you, are you famous? I'm famous. Do you want to be famous? I'm I already famous. How much so. is the beer? What? How much is the beer? Is it free? 250. How come you don't get free beer like everybody else around the corner? Because I'm a working man. Do you think this festival is elitist? What is it? Do you think this festival is elitist? No. You don't? No, I don't know what it means. So, <laughs> right, so there you have it right there. A point statement. The working man doesn't even know the meaning of the word elitist. Corey's back. He made the excuse he was going to say goodbye, but he's twitching a little bit. So I don't know. I'm going to hand him the mic and see if he can walk straight. Let's go this way. Let's follow him. It's the backstage area. What we got to do here now, here's the real trick at any festival, is getting by the guys at the door. Now we're going to get by okay, because we got a camera, you see? So we're all right. Here's Corey showing him his pass. That means he gets in. That's okay. Now, if you wait here long enough, you would see people getting rejected. But we're cool, because we were you. That means we're happy, I guess, right? Are you working on a crew or are you just schmoozing? We're, we're no, we're just Scottish, like nah, fuck. Scottish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot, boys and girls. Nah, here we go. That explains here we a lot. Go. One last thing to do. Bye, Scottish guys. Cheers. Up your kill. Up your kill. <laughs> now, die hard festival goers have got various techniques to crossing these puddles, all right? Let's get a good look at this puddle here. This is the way you cross a puddle at a festival. That way, that's the way you do it. You don't go on your tiptoes, you just fucking wade through it, all right? Hello, MTV. Hey, Jimbo. Jimbo. MTV are doing a thing. Open the door. All right, come in. This is Jimbo. This is our guitar tech. This is an official dressing room. This is what I'm backstage. Yeah. Bullshit about what goes on backstage. You can see Coca Cola, everything's totally innocent, nothing bogus going on, nothing weird. Everybody's all happy, straight, nobody's taking any drugs. I'm a race car driver, and I'm just passing through. That's it. All right, guys. Hey, mate. Whose dressing room is this, by the way? Trouble. Trouble's dressing room. Trouble were smoking, by the way. And they played in a, and they played in a hailstorm. Yeah, all right, boys and girls and little piggies, that concludes the Warrior Soul backstage tour. We'll be going to commercial and after that, Vanessa will be talking in her usual wonderful way about Venom. Bye-bye for now. Kisses. See you soon. Hi there, welcome back to Headbangers Ball, where we just enjoyed Overkill Bastard Nation from their live album, 10 Years of Wrecking Your Neck Live. Very appropriate as we are bringing you festival performances from around the globe. We're on location at Dynamo Festival, and right now we're gonna hook up with a badden from Venom, and we're gonna find out that uh, Venom are gonna be playing some festivals around this summer. So, uh, hi Abaddon, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. So, actually it's quite appropriate that we're on location at Dynamo, because it was actually the Dynamo Festival that inspired uh, Venom to get back together, right? Yeah, we um, spoke to Andre, the, the promoter, and um, as the 10th anniversary was coming up, he asked us, was it worth uh, repairing all damages and whatever? And uh, would we consider doing it? We consider headlining on Sunday night, and we said we would. And he spent an awful long time trying to get the curfew um, raised so we could go on at midnight or whatever and, and you know, play in the dark. And sadly, he couldn't get it worked out. So um, 
Biohazard are going to close tomorrow night and Paradise last tonight. And it's a great bill. It is. It's a fantastic bill. And we're going to be showing you full coverage of Dynamo in next week's show, presented, of course, by Biohazard. So uh, what festivals are you going to be doing this summer? Um, we're going to be playing the Wild Rock, which is up in Bergen in Holland, um, up in the north on the uh, 24th. That's with um, Machine Head, Propane. Um, and we're playing um, the Veer Rock in uh, Belgium on the 15th, I think, of uh, July. And we're talking to some uh, promoters about some Australian stuff and whatever. Hopefully we can get something done in England, but who knows. So what's it like when you get um, Venom back together? I mean, how much like rehearsing and stuff do you have to do? And, you know, how, what kind of set list are you going to be doing? Um, it, we're kind of lucky, really, I suppose, in that we can get together and play um, old material. We don't have to play any new stuff. We can, we can hope we can uh, patch differences up. We can, we've got a lot, of, you know, a lot of old albums there um, that, that a lot of young people haven't heard it, I guess. So... Um, I suppose we can we can get together, do this, and then talk about a new album around about maybe Christmas or whatever, and then some more some more gigs next year. And if it goes well, there may be a live album and a live video. You were saying that's a plan. Yeah, we're going to record everything we do because who knows how long it's going to last? Maybe five minutes, maybe five more years. I don't know. Well, it's always an event when Venom get back together, so we'll probably be catching up with you on some of those summer festivals. So good luck, Abaddon. Hope it goes well, and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Okay, that was Abaddon from Venom. Right now, we're crossing over to Rock Am Ring in Germany. We're going to show you Quicksand live on stage. Of course, they've got a new record out, Manic Compression. It's a great album. Here we go, Quicksand live, Rock Am Ring. Okay, that was Australian teen sensation Silverchair with their debut video, Pure Massacre. And the reason they're included in our festival frenzy is that they'll be appearing at the Roskilde Festival in Denmark. That's taking place from the 29th of June to the 2nd of July. And you can also catch the likes of Page and Plant, Cathedral and Van Halen on the same bill. So uh, we are at the uh, Dynamo Festival 10th anniversary. Lots of celebrations going on. And to find out a little bit more about the running of the festival, I've got what's known as the festival troubleshooter Jeff Weller joining me here backstage so Jeff uh, congratulations on the 10th anniversary of Dino Dynamo Dynamo <laughs> Dynamo Schmeinamo yeah, Andre, Andre uh, pulled it off <laughs> Andre's the man. MTV, you should give Andre respect because he knows what's going on. Yeah, well, way we, wanted to, we wanted to catch up with him, but he's actually pretty busy this yeah. afternoon, isn't he? So um, tell us a little bit about the organization of the event. How long does it take to put together? Basically, logistically, they're working on it uh, all year, and it's, uh, it's a lot of work. Any concerts, Tinas and Leon and Andre, and his whole family. It's like a big family, and uh, everyone really busts hump and works hard, and, uh, you know, Things come together. Good, you know. Good things come to those who work hard. And uh, how's this weekend gone for the Dynamo? It was killer. It, it went totally by the numbers. All the bands that Andre chose when he was putting together the bill really, you know, worked good. There were no rock stars like last year when we had Danzig here. But <laughs> since then, you know, he's kind of uh, atoned, and he understands that you know there's other people's views. But um, it was by the numbers. It was killer. It was really good. And we had some really bad weather in the afternoon. Did that cause you any major hiccups? <laughs> well, I also managed trouble, and uh, considering they're the doom uh, masters, uh, it rained. It rained. <laughs> and I mean it rained. It was like Noah's Ark. But no, then it cleared off, and the rest of the day was, you know, killer. Good. Excellent. Now, uh, over the 10 years, the Dynamo's gone from strength to strength. And personally, what I think is so good about the festival is that it seems to be an indication of what's going to be happening in metal over the next couple of years. So the people that put the bill together seem to have a really good feel for that. Who chooses the band? Andre does. Uh, Andre, it's Andre's vision. This is his baby. He started it 10 years ago, 2,500 people. And now we did over 100,000 two days yeah. in a row. Uh, he puts the bill together. He shows uh, a lot of wisdom in putting it together, seeing talent, and, and he's made a lot of bands' careers happen in Europe. He has, definitely. I'll agree with that. So very quickly, how many people roughly are working, um, you know, that all you've got all security, stage thousands. crew? Th yeah. li literally thousands. There's an, uh, there's an inner family that basically it's like an ant hive. There's an inner family and everything goes out from there. Right. And, uh, you know, people are really happy to be involved and we're happy they're involved. And the good thing also about Dynamo is that a lot of the proceeds go to the community as well, don't they? Yeah, this uh, this town really really digs all the commerce that comes in. I mean, the hotels, the gas. I mean, you know, the mayor and the city council definitely know what's going on. Good. Okay. Well, congratulations on a Thank successful you. tenth yeah, anniversary, right and on we on have you. to say, te here's to ten more years of Dynamo. Yeah, Fantastically we'll, organized we'll festival. See what happens. We'll see what happens. Thank well, you very we much. We wish you lots of luck and thank you to you and Andre for having us down here. Hey, anytime. You're more than welcome. <laughs> thank you to Jeff. He's the troubleshooter, the man that sorts out all the problems and 
sees where everybody has to go. He's done a great job this weekend. So right, we're going to commercials right now and then after that we'll bring you more festival mayhem and in fact, I think we're going to be talking to my dying bride who played here at the campsite on the Friday. So uh, here we go, commercial break. See you after that. Well, it's not very heavy metal, but it's so cold here. We're warming up with coffee here at Dynamo. The weather is atrocious. It's wet and windy for our festival frenzy. Welcome back. We just saw Ugly Kid Joe live at Rock Am Ring in Germany. Of course, both festivals taking place in Europe at the same weekend, but uh, we chose to come to Dynamo. So uh, up next, uh, we're going to talk some festival type things to Aaron. And uh, of course, he's from My Dying Bride. So nice to see you back on Headbangers Ball Air. And how are you surviving this atrocious festival weather? Well, it's just like England, so uh, <coughs> it's natural for me. I mean, in England, you're always soaking wet and miserable, so it makes no difference, really. So you feel very at home? Yeah, I'm enjoying myself. It's great. Now, you played here on the Friday over on the campsite in the big tent, though, which I was across there, and it's a really good place to play. How did things go for you? Is this one of the biggest uh, things you've played? Yeah, definitely. We we've normally try and avoid festivals because you, you always get sound problems um, the in-house lighting is not particularly brilliant at times um, and there's an awful lot of drunk people around who aren't really bothered who's playing they just like to throw stuff at stage uh, but it, it's the first time we've played live for a long time biggest crowd we've played in front of uh, and when we walked out there and they started cheering it was uh, really wonderful it was the first time we'd actually aired the new material <coughs> so we weren't sure whether they'd be uh, booing or cheering and well thank goodness they were cheering Congratulations, and of course, um, the, al the new My Dying Bride album, The Angel and the Dark River, has got rave reviews right across the press um, in Europe, so well done for that. Um, there's actually only six tracks on it, but you still get your money's worth because they're all pretty epic um, compositions, aren't they? They are, yeah. I mean, we should really put the uh, total running time on the album because people will look at it and think it's an EP or something like that. Um, that's just my dime bride have always been like that though all the songs even from the very first single we did for peaceville back in 92 i think was 12 minutes long just for the single but that's because we're such a big band and such a democratic band we all work together there isn't two people writing the material and everyone just following on everybody puts their own ideas in which generally makes the songs longer than normal but it isn't a problem for us i mean we don't get much airplay because of it um, but I mean we're quite open to uh, edit our songs down if necessary and we're quite happy to do that so it's not a problem and yeah the album is 52 minutes long so although it's only got six songs I don't think we're ripping anybody off at all. No, absolutely not. Now you've got a video coming out fairly soon. Um, tell us a little bit because you've gone for quite a, an important um, big exciting concept this time haven't you? Yeah, it's, we've done a video for the first song on the album, um, The Cry of Mankind. This is uh, kind of an anti-religion song. It's, it's one of our bitterest songs, really. It's, it's not an, not an up-tempo, aggressive rock track. It's, it's more of a, a narrated, ambient, strange piece. Um, and we're doing a, we've just done a video for it, which has got lots of religious overtones. Um, not as, um, I, don't, I don't suppose it's as satanic or as black as a lot of people would imagine it to be. Um, we're just questioning a few religious uh, aspects of life and stuff. Um, I haven't seen any of the video yet. I hope it's going to work out all right. I should see it in about a couple of weeks' time. But it was uh, the biggest production we've ever done before. We've done some real poxy videos in our past uh, on small camcorders and things. This time it was a full production company, stuff from Pinewood Studios and things like this. Um, so we were blown away when we saw the production site. Um, and so hopefully when it comes out, it should be um, quite impressive. Good. Well, very quickly, any more um, live performances or festivals for My Dying Bride? We kick off a tour on the 9th of June, I do believe, in The Hague. And we tour the whole of Europe until the 9th of July, a full month, where we'll be at the Quart Festival in Norway. Wow. And she'll be going everywhere, all over Europe. Well, lots of luck with the new record. That's My Dying Bride. Thanks to Aaron for talking to me. New album, The Angel in the Dark River. Now, we're going to be showing the video uh, in a couple of weeks' time, as Aaron said. And on next Sunday's show, you can check out My Dying Bride live at the Dynamo. We'll be bringing you a live performance from that. But right now, we're going to cross back over to Rock Am Ring in Germany. I do hope they're having better weather than us. And we're going to have a look at Danish rockers DAD live at Rock Am Ring 95. Yeah! <laughs>
Yes, indeed, it's the Headbangers Ball Festival Frenzy, and we just enjoyed Faith and No More at Rock Am Ring live there in Germany last weekend. Right now, we're at Dynamo again, and we're going to talk to Schweizer all the way from Germany also. And uh, we're going to talk to the guys a little bit. They played here at the campsite on the Friday night, and I think you have the honor of being the first German singing band to play at Dynamo. Is that right? Yes, that's right. But I wouldn't say it's a big Honor, it's uh, more than a, a big fun for us. It was, it was very uh, great fun to play there. We enjoyed it very much. For me, strange feeling playing here at Dynamo. Was uh, very afraid of the show. <laughs> it, uh, it was a great feeling for me playing here, really. Now, is this the biggest event you've done up till now? Yes. I was you've very astonished. It was a very big stage. <laughs> yeah. A very long way from the one side to the other side to walk. Have you played much outside of your home country? Sometimes in uh, Switzerland, Austria and Czech, Czech, uh, Czech, 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 yeah. So what, what's the, the best thing and the worst thing about playing a big festival like this? <laughs> the best thing? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a great feeling because uh, a lot of people there from different countries. I was walking about the campsite yesterday, talking to some of the guys. Um, it's a great, peaceful, friendly yeah. atmosphere here. Yeah. That's the thing I, I love most. I think. What about the worst thing? Is there anything bad you can think of? <laughs> My headache today. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, we talk a little bit about Schweizer now because um, you've got an album out called Eisenkopf. Yes. Which uh, means heavy metal, is that Met right? Metalhead. Metalhead, yeah. metalhead, sorry, yes. But you're not completely heavy metal in the traditional sense of the word. You seem to have a lot of different influences, a little bit of an industrial slant. Can you talk a little bit about your style? Oh, uh, I, I can't describe our style. We, we take uh, different influences and try to do our own sound. We have a saxophone player, yeah. <laughs> and nobody knows that this is a saxophone. Um, because we, we send the sound through different effects, through distortion, and so, so we, we try to make um, more different sounds from uh, the saxophone sound. Yeah, no, I saw it sounded really great actually. So very quickly, how difficult is it actually to sing in um, German and to put words to this style, this genre of music in German? Um, oh, it's. It's uh, no problem for me to sing in German. Uh, it's, it's the language I can speak best. <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm <laughs> my English is not so good <laughs> to explain uh, as um, feelings in a foreign language. So I, I try to do it in, in German, and it's um, it's very interesting to do this because um, you have the very hard sound of the German language and the very hard metal sound and. This is connected very well. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Buffo and Tommy from Schweizer. And I know you've got a bad headache, but I think another really bad thing is the rain. It's starting to pour down here at Dynamo. We're going to commercials right now. After that, we'll be back with more. I think we're going to be hooking up with Paradise Lost right after these messages. See ya. Welcome back to the Headbangers Ball Festival Frenzy and as you can see behind me we're now enjoying typical summer festival weather. It's pouring down, it's absolutely freezing and I think uh, my next guest Paradise Lost probably feel a little bit of home here because uh, their video for Widow was kind of a bit like the conditions out there and you guys are no strangers to festivals anyway so welcome to Aaron and Greg. Um, we just to kind of kick off, um, you, you did your warm up gigs as the, the pain nurse but actually uh, this headlining this Dynamo Festival on Saturday night is like the, the, the big kickoff to the Draconian Times campaign. So how did that go for you? Um, it was one of the most amazing feelings I've ever had, actually. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It's, much, it's, about, it's got to be one of my favourite concerts we've ever played. I mean, uh, it's all, I mean that's partially due to we haven't played a really a major concert for going on eight months now. Eight, ten months. And uh, no, it was amazing. I mean, full respect to the audience because, I mean, they were wet, they were tired. And yet they still had all that enthusiasm, all 140,000 of them. Respect to them, massive time. Yeah. It must have been quite a challenge actually, because like I said, it's one of the first gigs in a long time. Um, are there still like nerves backstage? And there were some beforehand, yeah. I mean, uh, everyone kept sort of, I don't know if I can say this, but everyone kept going for a piss outside <laughs> the window. 
Because no one could hold their water. Uh, no, we like to know these behind the scenes things. And uh, everyone was sort of feeling sick and then suddenly a bottle of Jack Daniels appeared and everyone got their nerve again. And uh, it's like liquid confidence. Liquid. And, uh, oh, that's a good one. I'll try and remember that one. Now, you, you know, you guys are no strangers to festivals. You've, done, you've played a lot of shows. And in fact, the first part of Draconian Times campaign, it kind of centers around festivals. What are um, the best and worst things about playing a big event like this? Um, I think one of the best things about festivals is you feel the pressure's off, you know, because you're not entirely responsible for the show. When you go to a headline show, you've got to solely please the people who have paid to come in. But a festival, it's like it's a general atmosphere thing. But um, I mean, the bad things is like you don't get a proper sound check. You know, the te it's, it's worse for the crew because they're running around like idiots for 30 minutes before you go on stage trying to make sure everything works. So for them, it's quite bad, but for us, it's just it's quite relaxing. And then we run around like idiots for an hour and ten minutes afterwards. So, <laughs> so you actually in, the, the enjoy doing them. It's different uh, to what you normally do, but it's fun. Yeah, I do enjoy playing festivals. Here. It's cool. Now, uh, Draconian Times. It's we all know it's getting really good uh, press all over Europe. And um, you know, some there's some quite complex things on the album. Some um, kind of choral arrangements and stuff. How difficult is that? Are you going to try and reproduce that live? Yeah. Um, well, when we actually started writing the songs, it was with a view to using all the stuff live. We were originally going to use keyboards on the song Enchantment, uh, but then eventually we got around to using a proper choir, which was interesting. Uh, I, I can't really say any more than that. It was interesting, you know, watching all these people in this room with Nick and things, you know. Um, um, but no, live we're going to... Uh, it's like Lee is very sort of capable with playing with the DAP machines or, or the click tracks and things. So we didn't want to use a keyboardist live, so I stood there playing a couple of numbers and standing there then playing a couple of... So we figured it's, it's more apt that we should just use the DAP machines. So everything you hear will be like on the record, but um, it'll still be just the five of us playing, you know. So. It's, just, um, it's, it's mainly to add effect, you know, and just a bit of the atmosphere, yeah, as I've seen. And it, it, it works quite well. I mean, the Painless shows, we did those. So ever so secret shows because um, we wanted, we wanted to try out the dance. It was really to it. That's me. The reason we didn't go out as Paradise Lost. We wanted to make sure everything worked. You know, cause it was a new experience for us, and also it was a, like a, a builder for Lee as well. But um, yeah, it all worked out well, and the Dynamo it sounded pretty good. Apparently, out front. It did. I was out front, and uh, Lee did really, really well. So congratulations to him. Very quickly, um, we've been enjoying the video for the last time at Headbangers Ball. It, when what's going to be the next uh, video of Draconian Times? We think. I mean, uh, this is the plan that we're going to do Forever Failure because we want to do like a downbeat song for the next single. And uh, the plan is to do a kind of a a video similar to how Shinda's list was shot. Very sort of sharp black and white of um, sort of the countryside up north. Northern metal we're changing Yorkshire to, so, you know. <laughs> so that's the plan anyway, you know. That sounds fantastic. Well, thanks for joining me here at rainy old Dynamo. At least you had decent weather yesterday when you played. And uh, in fact, we're going to be showing you Paradise Lost live at Dynamo in next Sunday's show when we bring you full coverage of the festival and uh, the guys will be interviewed by Biohazard, so you'll catch Paradise Lost again next week. But for now, we're going to turn the clock back to 1994 and we're going to look at Paradise Lost live on stage at Rock Am Ring last year. Check it out. This one's called Am. Alrighty, that was Danzig live at MTV's Rock Am Ring last weekend. Fantastic live performance and of course Danzig back in Europe. First headlining tour. Check him out. This is the Headbangers Ball Festival Frenzy. We're going crazy backstage at Dynamo 95. And uh, you may have seen that Beavis and Butthead episode when Beavis and Butthead queued up for hours to get into one of these toilets. And then I think it was Beavis knocked the toilet over when Butthead was in there and there was a big mess. Anyway, these toilets are a very big part of festivals. Have a look in here. This one has actually got some toilet paper. Can you believe it? Which is always a good thing. And actually, talking of toilet paper, we got a few festival survival tips coming up right now. And mine is to always bring your own roll of toilet paper. Wear some boots to watch out for the mud. And also, 
keep on one of these jackets to watch out for the mud as well because there's a hell of a lot of it flying around out there. Anyway, right now our festival frenzy continues. We're going to go across to talk to some bands, find out their survival tips for how you can get through the summer festival circuit in one piece. And also we're going to find out a few funny stories from behind the scenes at festivals. Check it out. No, I think uh, I think it's the armor. You got to get some armor, especially when you got bands like Biohazard, Machine Head, Life of Agony kicking you in the butt. You got to get some armor, that real like steel plated stuff they had in the Knights and Shining Armor days, you know? It's steel plated. Yeah, you're yeah, right. You know, maybe a bulletproof vest here or there, you know? I also suggest you bring like a 357 Magnum. I'm like, kidding. Well, I recommend two joints. Bring something to sop up the grease and the food. And, um, I don't know, bring a raincoat. It's pretty nasty. It starts off, it's like 200 degrees when you first get here. Then all of a sudden it starts raining and it goes down to like negative 40. You've already given your shirt away to somebody else. It's like on the other side of the field. So, there's your tip. 1.5 milligrams of Xanax spread over six hours. I guess dodge all the water bottles that are filled with piss. I don't know. <laughs> and 18 hours of sleep. Um, first, you need the three latex items. You need the uh, rubber boots. You need the uh, raincoat, possibly the umbrella, and you need the uh, other ones. Uh, I think basically you should just watch out for each other and respect the person next to you out there. And uh, if anyone needs help, definitely give them a hand because uh, I think the most important thing is that nobody gets hurt at Everyone's these festivals. Is totally important. I was watching the kids out before, and if someone fell on the floor, you know, people would just help, help them right them up. up. Which that's, that's the way it's got to be. The way it be. should be. So that's uh, the safety tip from Life of Agony. Well, one of my favorite things in life, besides sex, is of course food. As a band member, because the food here sucks, I suggest packing a very large lunch and having a very large breakfast. As a fan, and once again, the food does suck, bring about a week's worth of food with you. I love doing product endorsements because I get all this stuff for free now. Yeah, get blitzed and um, wake up and then get blitzed again and you'll survive. You'd probably get hurt a few times, you know, maybe a Band-Aid would work. Like, I think some people fall and you just get a tent stake in your eye or something, you know. It's pretty crazy out there. I'm glad I'm on this end. My survival tip would be to, like, I don't know, what I try to do is, like, I try to stay as much as I can, like, inside the backstage. So I don't, I don't even go near the stage before the show because I don't want to freak out too much. And when it comes time to do it, you just go there and, and you know, it's, it's almost like when you get in a car wreck or something. A lot of adrenaline. And it's, it's great when it's over. And a Valium afterwards to wake up. Dynamo! Full metal entertainment metal. guaranteed. Metal! Baby metal. <laughs> Okay, that was Van Halen live at Rock Am Ring 95, and you are back with the final part of our Headbangers Ball Festival Frenzy. Yeah, you've made it through, right through to the end of our two and a half hour coverage of loads of different festivals, live performances from all over the place. And just to finish tonight, we're going to hook up with Biohazard. They are headlining one of the nights here at Dynamo 95. So as you can see, I've got Bobby and Billy with me. So if we could catch up with your latest news, guys, um, you did a really good tour in the States with Slayer, right? Um, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to recently. Yeah, we just did Slayer and everything. First of all, I just want to say Doggy Dog Doggy is in the dog. house, all right? Yeah, That's it. Just played a brilliant live set here, right? Just, they were awesome. My man busted a, a, a surfboard out on the crowd. It was the best thing I've ever seen. Good. Peace, man. And we'll be Yo, seeing Dog Eat Dog next yeah. week on our full coverage of Dynamo. But going Doggy back to Biohazard, Dog. tell us what you've been up to. Yeah, we're doing a, um, okay, we're doing a European tour. We just got done with Slayer in the States and Australia. And then we, we're going to tour over here in Europe. And then we're going to go over to Japan and kick it over there one more time. And then we're gonna go back to America and write a new album. We're gonna go back to Brooklyn and, and do some pre-production. And then uh, we don't know where we're gonna record. We could record in Europe or we could record in, uh, what, in New York or whatever. But the, we want to submit the new record by Christmas. Uh, I want to, if all you know goes well, you know, submit the new record to the label by before the holidays, and then uh, be ready to be on the road in January. You know what I'm saying? With the, you know, with the new album coming out. 
Now you, you have actually written, I think it's something like four new tracks that appeared on various compilation albums. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about those? We did. Uh, we have four songs that uh, we recorded recently, recorded fully, and you know they're going to be on the new album and stuff. Um, we have a bunch of new tunes that we've been writing separately and together over the past six months, and uh, we're going to work on those tunes to get back. Like Bobby said, a song called Scumbag, which we're playing here, which you may see or may not see. Um, a song called Falling, a song called Sad Man, and a song called what's the other song? Oh, I haven't looked at the set list, man. But they've been available on a couple of uh, compilation albums, haven't they, some um, of those? A few of them. Uh, a few of the new songs have been. Um, Scumbag, which we're playing live, um, has, isn't available, you know, isn't out yet. You know, and we're just going to wait and release all three, all four of those on the new album. A bunch of other tunes. And we'll see. Excellent. So, can you tell us um, a little bit, how difficult is it for you guys to write on the road, or do you have to do it when you're taking time off? You know what's you know what's weird about the road? It's an it's an uneven balance because so much happens to you on the road. Your life is so hectic that you really need to write because writing is th is therapeutic, you know. But when you can't find the time, you get like a build up, yeah. and then when you go home, it's like boom, you just shoot it all out, like you just blow your load, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it's I didn't say nothing wrong, right? whatever. But that's to me, that's the way it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, re the rest of the guys, you know, we all wish we could have more time. We got some recording equipment now, and we're bringing that out on the road. And uh, it's good to be headlining for the sole reason that we get sound checks, so we can rehearse during sound checks. Because we're used to being like, you know, you know, opening up for bands, and you don't really get sound checks at all, you know. So that always helps, isn't it, to get that time? Oh, it's totally great. But otherwise, it's all there. It doesn't matter. You know, it'll all come out, and it'll be on time. So when you're on tour, you're like a sponge. You soak up all the, all the vibes, all the different yeah. cultures, and it all comes out on the next record. So you had Urban Discipline, then you went up to State of the World Address. So where are you going to go with the next album? Have you got any direction yet? Uh, yeah, forward. Yeah, that's I it. That. You know what I mean? Biohaz, we've always played and done and and kind of written about things we wanted to write about, things that are true to us. And we're just going to take that a step further and keep going with the experiences that we've experienced over the past year and a half. That's it. Great. Okay. Well, I wish you lots of luck with that. And of course, we should tell you that the Biohazard Dudes are going to be hosting next week's edition of Headbangers Ball. They're going to be bringing you full coverage of Dynamo 95. So we're looking forward to that. Um, who are you most looking forward to to talking to next week? What, out of what the bands that we're going to talk yeah. to? Machine Head. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I talked to Warrior Soul, Machine Head, and uh, who else I want to talk to? Oh, Mad Ball. Mad Ball. Doggy Dog. Mad Ball. New York City. Do uh, Doggy Dog. Life of Agony. Life of Agony. Yeah. <laughs> That's all coming at you next week on Headbangers Ball, our coverage of Dynamo 95, brought to you courtesy of the Biohazard Dudes. And we're going to conclude tonight's edition of our festival frenzy the best possible way. Here we go. This is Biohazard live on stage at Dynamo 95 headlining. You'll see them next week hosting the show. So we're saying good night. Goodbye from everybody here on the festival frenzy. We'll Thank see you. Biohazard next week. Here they are live.
Biohazard hosting Headband yeah. Ball, live yeah. at the Dynamo Open Air, 1995. We'll be Head bringing it to you ball. live. Headband is Ball coming, coming up there. next. We'll show yeah. see it. Peace. All right, yo, what's up? What's it's up? Biohazard. Yeah. Come with interviews, interviews and live performances from all the bands at Dynamo 95, yo. Peace out, coming up. Headbang is ball, kid! Bring you the headbang is ball, motherfucker! Biohazard Dynamo! 95, yeah! Kill ya! Everybody front to back, getting up in the air on the 
this one, okay? Yeah! All the way back. Check it out, Dynamo, open air, 1995. We're kicking it off with Doggy Dog just played. I'm Bobby from Biohazard. I'm gonna take over the mic for a little while. I'm gonna ask the guy from Warrior Soul a few questions here. Yo, man, you guys just put out a new record, right? And you're doing a festival out here. So, yo, man, what's going on? Well, it's like, it's loud, it's exciting, it's, I don't know, it's a lot of people. We usually have this many people at our gigs, but, yeah, man, it's a lot. Of no, this is the most we've ever played for. It's gonna be cool. Yeah. Yo, man, you guys doing a whole European tour or what, man? What are you doing? Coming back to England to do um, headline the Kerrang tour for Clawfinger and Missy Loves Company and Head Swim. So that should be good. Seven dates, and uh, we're doing four dates in Germany to solid that up, and then uh, back to America to sell some records. Right on, man. Well, yo. Uh, you know, I'm hearing good things about you guys, man. You know, you're coming up. You got this record coming out now. It's like been out what? Three months or so, something like that. Well, it's been out, it's been out this, the of this year. Yeah, as you can see, this crowd is down. It's psyched. You know what I'm saying? Are you ready to play or what? Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm gonna kick 100,000 butts today. It's cool. 
ready to go. Get these guys going. Hurry up. Yeah, what's up, Kev? All right, man. Yo, bro. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Fucking rock and roll. What's up? Hey, what's up? Like what's up? We're in uh, fucking Holland or something like that. Yeah, is this Holland? Where the fuck are we anyway? What are we? We're in Holland? Yeah, we're in Holland, man. Beautiful Netherlands. Yo, I want to wish you guys peace, all the best, good and uh, good, man. good luck, man. Good luck, man. Thanks a lot. Good luck for you. Good luck, man. Thanks, man. Check out Warriors Show live at the Dynamo, yo. What's up? Here we are back in Headbangers Ball, Biohazard edition of Dynamo 95. Life of Agony, Joey Z. What's up, everybody? Hey. Joey Z, Life of and Agony. And Alan. <laughs> so basically, what's up? You guys been around for how long, about? Uh, five, six years. Yeah? Yeah. Five, six years. And you're also from? Sprouted out from Brooklyn? the hometown Brooklyn. The Brooklyn brothers are right here. Interesting piece of trivia for you. Life of Agony, been good friends with Biohazard for a long time. 
you uh, also used to tune my guitar. Yep, that's right. I was right a up, tech for Billy. Right up our set long list. Long time ago. Proud, my to, proud to say that we've been lifelong, lifelong friends. That's eh? right. I would say that. Nice to join your shirt. At one point. Yeah, they did all the artwork. That's right. For a long time. At one time. point, uh, you almost was living with me. Still haven't paid you for that, huh? No, I'm waiting for the check, but <laughs> they'll probably bounce. Money, money's tight. <laughs> money's tight. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what's up? Uh, you guys are working on a new album right now, right? Yep. Ugly. 95. It's gonna kick you in the bobo. When do you think that's coming out? Uh, probably September. It's gonna, you know, it's kind of going in a different direction, you know, but we're gonna still keep that heavy edge and just take your fucking heads off. Excuse me. Beep. <laughs> Beep. Brooklyn talk. All right, back to your, your album, which is very important to me, being right. a big fan of Life of Agony. Um, your first album was kind of along of the lines of suicide. Yeah. Right? Um, which is a good album. I love it. Is your new album, does it have similar connotation to that or is it breaking away from that or what's up? Um, it breaks away from that. We got, you know, we got a little bit more into, you know, we, we've been on the road for so long and we feel we've grown differently and we've grown up as people and uh, we just have different feelings now, uh, different vibe going on in the band. You know, we got a new drummer, Sal, and, you know, writing with him was a different experience. So, you know, basically we just opened up our minds and we brought in our ideas and, you know, we're just going to give it to you. So lyrically, it, it, it has gone a different direction, you think? Um, it, it's always going to be about real emotions and real feelings. And, you know, most of the songs deal with, you know, feeling alienated and, you know, unsure of yourself. And it, all real feelings that everybody has, you know. Kind of how we're feeling, man. That's cool. Kind of something everybody can relate to. That's right. This is Biohazard Dynamo, Open Peace. Air, 95, Life of Agony. Peace. Check them out live. <laughs>
myself complaining Cause I have love to suffer When I do I feel creation Open up its power A bubble no prayers, no kiss, no cross Just cause my skies are gray Give up thoughts and wishes I close my eyes and dream away in my That was Metal Hippie Blood live here from Dynamo Open Air 95 Headbangers Ball being hosted by us, Biohazard. And we're here with the guys from Metal Hippie Blood. Why don't you tell us who you are and what you do in the band, fellas? Well, I'm Michael Orr and I'm the singer. And I'm just guitar player. A nameless guitar player. I like that. These guys are from Stockholm, Sweden, and I understand there's a pretty happening scene going on up in Sweden. Uh, we've played with Clawfinger, and we've gone up to as north as Fagerstar, and we've played down in Stockholm at the guys' club Genos. Tell us a little bit about the scene and what's going on. There's a lot of bands coming out of Sweden right now. I think um, 
golfing, of, of course, Marby Chain, Sugar, uh, and Charles. <laughs> Entombed. Entombed, yeah, they've been happening for a lot, long time, so. Yeah. What are some of you guys' favorite bands? Entombed. <laughs> no, actually, you mean in Sweden or in? In, in? in the whole world, in the music. Actually, we tour with a band called Caius. Sure. And uh, I think we were pretty. Uh, I mean, those guys kick ass. You know? Kai has opened for us yeah. on the Fishbone tour that we did yeah. in the States uh, cool at the beginning of this tour that we're ending up right now. So, um, what do you guys think about this Dynamo open air thing and uh, how did you feel up there playing? I think it's a kind of European Woodstock thing, <laughs> I would say. Well, I'd say that, yeah. I'd say that maybe the Woodstock got the idea from here. I don't know I don't who's know. doing it first. We're too young to know that, but. Uh, we're going to go to some stupid commercials that really don't mean anything again. Some more uh, commercial nonsense and Biohazard Dynamo Open Air. We'll be speaking to Nail Bomb next. Peace. Have the hair. No. Let's go, Cornholio. No. Show him the hair. No. For, come on, people. Have... No, mommy, no. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, he's nine years old. Look at this kid. Where, where are we? 
I Where don't are we? know. He's a Cavalera breed. You don't know. This is the uh, little brother of Max Cavalera. And here we are at the uh, Dynamo Open Air. Welcome back to the Headbangers Ball. This is young Richie. Here we are with the uh, the Nail Bomb guys. Oh my God, how, how did I end up with the Nail Bomb guys? I don't know. What's up? Why don't you all tell uh, people who you are and what you do in the band? All right. Um, in Nail Bomb, I play three string guitar. I play four string sepultura, three string, and Nail Bomb, I sing. And uh, this is Dave from Neurosis. Hi. Right. plays bass. I play bass and scream a tiny bit. And this is Riz. What do you do, Riz? Make noise, play sounds. This guy's from Frontline Assembly, in case you cats have heard of them or not. So, as we know, Nail Bomb is a, uh, a side project of uh, Sepultura and uh, Fudge Tunnel. We've got members of Frontline Assembly and Neuroses. I heard that some other punk losers going to play on stage with them today, but I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. They have some surprises lined up for the crowd. So uh, I, apparently this is the first and only Nail Bomb gig in the history of um, Nail, Bomb. Nail Bomb, the history of the world. This is where we're breaking ground today. We're breaking ground. Yeah, the idea, the idea came up because of, uh, actually because of Big Black. This is Alex really very much into Big Black and everybody knows Big Black broke up because they didn't want to become shitty or whatever. <laughs> so we didn't, we're not going to let Nail Bomb become shitty. We're going to break up before we even give a chance to become fucked up. So. so are the rumors of you guys being sellouts and playing this gig for millions of dollars, are those true? No, it's all, it's all fake, man, you know. It, that's why we're going to break up, so nobody can say we sold out. <laughs> well, I guess that's true punk. So we're going to go now to a triple shot of uh, kind of in the same genre. We're going to go to a, a live nail bomb video, a fudge tunnel video, and a simple tour video. So we'll see you back on Headbangers Ball, Dynamo. Pain is reality. Pain is reality. Pain is reality.
Yo, what up? Back here, Biohazard hosting Hammer Bangers Ball today, uh, Dynamo Festival 95. We just seen a triple shot of Nail Bomb, Fudge Tunnel, Sepultura, and uh, now we got these guys up here, and we're doing the interviews, and the, we got the live bands here. And one of the bands today is Mad Ball from New York, our brothers from New York. Yeah. All right, so yo, guys, man, what do you think of Europe? And uh, congratulations on your new record. Tell us about it. Europe's real cool. I like the crowd over here. I like the response that we get. Real good people. Yeah, the record's doing good. People seem to like it a lot, you know? Yeah. Yo, uh, how did the crowd, how did the crowd seem different? Check it out, look. How, did, how do you think the kids, are the kids any different? You know, when I say the kids, I mean the crowd, you know, the whole people in general. Are, how are they different from, uh, like, America or what, man? What yeah, I mean, you know, it's definitely different. I mean, uh, in America, they don't respect hardcore music as much as they do over here. You know, they don't give it a chance as much. Yeah, yeah, it ain't so much like the reactions from the kids are different, like from Europe versus America, but it's more widespread here in Europe, you know? I mean, you got like, I mean, look, we're on MTV here in Europe, you ain't gonna see this in America. Yeah, I know. You know? That says a lot right there. Alone. That's the whole thing. I, I, we think the same thing. America's got a lot of growing up to do as far as like hard music's concerned. So yeah. yeah. So, uh, yo, man, is there anything you want the kids to know about like the history of the band? You know, the philosophy behind the hardcore movement and uh, no, what you're trying to spread to Europe, man. Say it up, man. I want to say hello to my brother Raj. I want everybody to look back into the roots of the music. You decided to start a band or you want to get into hardcore music, everybody's welcome. But look into the roots of the music. Look at the bands that started it and struggled. So it's, it's more in the fashion, you know, it comes from the heart. It ain't like the newest trend or nothing like that. We've been in this for like 10 years. You know, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a lifestyle, you know, it's real. If it wasn't for y'all guys, man, Biohazard wouldn't be alive, and I wouldn't probably be alive or be free. So, yo, man, peace and peace to Agnostic Front always. Everybody Much from New York respect. Hardcore scene, peace out, y'all. Much respect to Madball. New York Hardcore lives in Europe. Dynamo 95. Hit check out Madball Live. Dynamo Open Air. Peace.
What's up? Here we are at the Dynamo Open Air. Uh, we're doing the MTV special today. I'm Danny from Biohazard. Uh, we're here with Dave and Gus from Grip Incorporated. What's up, guys? Hey, how you doing? Doing great, thanks. Having a great time. So, how you guys feel being here today at the Dynamo Open Air? You got like a hundred and skillion million people out there. You guys are playing today at like seven o'clock. How does it feel? Amazing, amazing. I've been wired since this morning just with the excitement of you know, from the hotel that we were staying at, we were able to hear the, the drums checking, you know, the whole pounding, the thumping of the drums, and, you know, it's just amazing. Pounding and thumping. Yeah. Pounding and thumping. Pounding and thumping. Um, we're going to wind them all up, and we're going to have to get Valium on the way out, because yeah. that'd be totally crazy. Oh, yeah, totally. But, well, that's cool. But, 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 no, I shouldn't say it. <laughs> we're not far from Amsterdam, so I'm sure most of these people are intoxicated anyway, but... Uh, but for the past two days, well, it's the second day, right? Actually, yeah. we've, we've been on tour with Motorhead for five weeks, so we've been intoxicated for, for five, five weeks. So. weeks. This is like fucking Woodstock over here. Oh, brilliant. So you guys just uh, 
finished up a tour with Motorhead, right? Yeah. yeah. How was yeah. that? That was excellent. That was so much fun. I mean, we've known each other for years, you know, and now it's just reunion again, you know, with a new band, Motorhead. You guys partying a lot, going oh, crazy. Too totally. much. Too much. It's like we're glad to get off that tour because, I mean, I got a feeling this guy loved being around Lemmy, man. It's something about his skin tone. Just yeah, tell yeah, him. Yeah, that's what it is. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I couldn't get. Actually, he was like my shadow. You know? Sorry, Lemmy. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. He sounded a little bit like this, you know, like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It was great. You know? they, no, they were really good to us. Um, everything went so smooth. I mean, there was no hitches. There was no bother. It was, it was an excellent tour. The really most exciting good. thing about that was that that. That tour was the kickoff of the first show Grip Incorporated ever did. So and it's you, like you we guys jumped off the deep end. We didn't do little club shows first. It's like after the garage, we went straight to a big stage with Motorhead. Right, right in the fucking fire. So yeah. what are you guys doing next after the Dynamo here? You still on tour in Europe? You going back no, to the we're states? Going, we're going back to the states, and then we start doing the whole uh, the U.S. We start doing the United States, and and then come back to Europe in October, October, October November. Yeah. So guys, tell me about uh, your album, Power of Inner Strength. Well, it's uh, it's about that big. Cool. Comes on cassette. Cool. It's about it's this color. <laughs> right here, right here. Yeah, it looks like that. Yeah, that's it. There you go. I see if it got. No, it hasn't got that name on it. Like, they wouldn't let me put that on no. it. No, the bastard. So did you guys do a video? Yeah, yeah. we did one for Ostracize. Ostracize. So, yeah, it's a little bit more of a. Wait, Biohazard, right? You yes. guys got that groovy, funky beat. That, there you that, go. That, right. We that took a bit of white Biohazard. Boy thing. We got a yeah, bit we, of we Biohazard got, in it. You yeah. Know, we, oh yeah. yeah. We put a little bit of rhythm. Yeah, yeah. I'm on it. Yeah. I'm on it. It was great. Fucking, You've that's, inspired me. Likewise, Holmes. That's great. Okay, we're gonna go to Grip Incorporated live now. The Dynamo Open Air, Headbangers Ball. See you up there. See ya. Energy is power. Power <laughs> of inner strength.
What's up? This is Billy from Biohazard hanging backstage at Dynamo 95, the Biohazard special, Headbangers Ball. Hey! Hanging backstage, we haven't had enough time, there's over 25 bands playing this year, so here's check out a few highlights of the bands that we don't have enough time to cover. Check it out. Shihad is on to their second album, Killjoy, which just came out about a month ago. Uh, we've been together for six years, we're from New Zealand, um, we play freaky music but heavy music and um, we have been lucky enough to get over here and play at the Dynamo Festival today or yesterday which is cool.
formed in Gothenburg early 92 uh, and uh, we recorded the album was it 94 and um, with the producer Bernie Randall from Gothenburg and we made a video for Insane Alone and uh, hopefully we're doing another video now when we get back to Sweden. Next up is uh, Rotterdam and Metropolis Festival, 1st of July, and uh, then we'll just see what happens, I guess. We we'll take it day by day, so... Yeah, we got an album called Pain. It's out at the moment, like you know. Um, Sony Rick Records. Sony Rick Records and some kicking tracks on there, like you know. And there's some good vibes on there, like some positive, wicked messages, like going out there, like you know. <laughs> I, I can't describe our style. We, we take uh, different influences and try to do our own sound. We have a saxophone player yeah. <laughs> and nobody knows that this is a saxophone um, because we, we send the sound through different effects, through distortion and so so we we try to make um, more different sounds from uh, the saxophone sound.
Just what nobody wanted. I'm just what nobody wanted. Just what nobody wanted. I'm just what nobody wanted. I think the job has got it in for me. Can you please tell me who's the player? For all the bills upon my lap, they greet and grow, then eat the cat. Where they come from, I don't know. Care of them, but they will go. It seems that life's a big frustration. Why is everybody out to bring me down? There has to be a simple explanation. in the air. Biohazard version of Headbangers Ball coverage of Dynamo 95 with Fear Factory. Check them out. I'm Dino. I'm Bert. You guys just played an awesome set. We're going to be getting to that soon. But first, a few questions. What's the question? You got a new album coming out, which personally I love. Therapy of Pain is going to be the song, I think. But check it out. Tell me what's up. What's up with the new album? Oh, just, you know, fucking ready for it to come out June 12th. Um, it's, it's a mixture of a lot of different styles. You know, we got like a little bit of industrial, we got a little bit of techno in there, we got some really heavy riffs on there, and Bird's got like amazing voice in this record. Which I will vouch for. I think we topped ourselves on this record. We've definitely taken everything that we've done in the past and just threw it all together and just like a just a complete hybrid. I'm I'm really proud of this record because we worked really hard on it to get the sound and we went through a lot of bull to get to it too, and so the, the stress is real and so it's fun just releasing it on stage. Yeah, you guys spent a lot of time on the road in the support of the first album. Did uh, that pay off a lot? Hell yeah, especially touring with uh, was that band Biohazard? 
Yeah, I can't, I can't remember the name of that, that, that band. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, the band I stole By riffs who? from. Oh, the band I stole riffs from, that band. Oh, man. <laughs> we have a song called uh, Cornered on the new album, State of the World Address. And uh, when we were writing it, I showed Dino a couple of riffs. And he was like, check out the new Fear Factory song. And he played the riff over and over. So Danny and I were like, you're going to rip it off. They're going to rip it off. And he kept letting us think that. So we waited for the new album. The new album is called Demanufacture. And it comes out June 16th? June, June 12th. June 12th. So go in. Is this England though? As Biohaz says, do not pay for it. If you cannot afford it, steal the album. Steal it. Yo, we're going to be checking out, we're checking out live Fear Factory. But first, we're going to Fear Factory while they're recording their new album. Good to see how it really was. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we're much like any other band, really. We are. I think we really set aside ourselves, and uh, I don't think we've even pigeonholed ourselves over our records. We the first record was a very, you know, brutal record, and uh, you know had all the death grind and you know, industrial influences, and, to, and then that was pretty new. And my vocals were pretty new for that kind of music. Then a year later, we come out with the uh, experiment, Fear Is the Mind Killer, and that was quite a bold step for a lot of bands and because it was really nothing like the first solo of a new machine. Um, this next one is, uh, as I said, is another, I wouldn't say it's an experiment because it's a natural step for us, but it is very different. <laughs> I want this record to be pre presented to the public and to our audience is that I want it to be like a futuristic metal record. I want it to be something for the future. And uh, as a step for Fear Factory, this was a, uh, a, a, a very logical and natural step for us. We did not go into the studio planning to write, okay, we're not going to do death metal, we're not going to do grind, we're not going to do industrial. This is just our natural step for us and it just came out to be a very futuristic sounding record. Um, it could even go towards the cyber aspect. We're touching upon virtual reality within the, uh, the whole packaging of this next record and the music itself is uh, you know, virtual reality in the sense of like it's almost real pain basically. Lyrically I wanted it to be, it's almost turning out to be like a concept record in a sense whereas it's like a, it could be each song is like a little soundtrack it takes a little synapse from somebody's life and while that person is describing to you what their life is like, it could even be the same person the whole time, but just his aspect of his surroundings and how society has treated him. record is going to be called Demanufacture, you know, de touching on technology right there. Technology and almost the uh, human aspect where there's so much technology in our daily lives and in the way we live that we're losing our humanity. We're becoming the machine that, you know, the, every, that we're being taught to be. Colin Richardson is a very fine producer. We had the luck to use him on our first record, uh, Salt of a New Machine, and uh, that, we loved the sound of that so much. We've become a better band in the past two years, and he's become a better producer. He's produced some excellent records. Um, you know, Machine Head's record is a very fine record. Uh, Carcass, Heartwork is a very fine record. And that's just the only name, too, of a, a list of many. A lot of extreme bands say, oh, we're going to change, we're going to change, and it's such, um, you know, we've got to put lots of samples in. And when you actually hear the record, it's often just the same band tarted up slightly, but I think this, it's got big orchestral keyboards, 
It's got a lot of machine noises um, and really, really catchy songs. So I think it is a definite change, but without sacrificing anything what the band were originally about on, on, this, uh, on the new record. just a very definite non-death metal, non-grindcore, and non-industrial record. I, I don't even know how to describe it really. It's just, uh, I guess you just have to hear it, wait and hear it.
Yo, what's up? It's Bobby from Biohazard, trying to help out uh, MTV Headbangers Ball with the Dynamo Festival. We're back up, kid. Yo, this is uh, this is good friends of ours, man. Our brothers in Machine Head. They're out here, you know. They're just wrecking shit in Europe, and uh, they got a great new record out, and it's on Roadrunner, man. Yo, what's up? This is Rob Flynn. What up? What up, kid? What's up with the record? It's chilling, man. It's doing like really good. Um, We've been out on tour now. We've been headlining for I guess like the last two months, and it's culminating like like this is the big, you know, this is the end of the tour for us as far as like the European section, and it's been going killer, man. I mean, we had like a bunch of shows. We played like the Brixton the other night, and uh, it, was, it went on pretty amazing. It went pretty amazing. This is gonna be like our uh, our first festival, if you will. Yeah, man. Yo, we played we played this a couple of years ago. It was really cool. You know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. Like, unbelievable when you get to play in front of that many people. So where we're from. What's the most amount of people you ever played for right now? Uh, it was something on one of them Slayer shows. It was like, it was like the biggest. It was like 9,000 people. Like right. now you're gonna be like, like how many? How many people are here? It's like 90,000, 100,000 people. Yeah, it's cool, man. Oh, tomorrow's gonna be a five crap day. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> Nerves make us nervous. <laughs> <Yeah. It's> going... <laughs> so yo, uh, awesome, so where you going from here, man? What's up? Uh, right after this, tomorrow after we play, uh, we're gonna. Cruise back to the airport. We're going out to Japan. We're going to be playing Australia and stuff. Uh, coming back here, doing a couple of festivals. I just saw the flyer for the festival we're doing. It's like Venom's playing. Venom. Oh, shit. I wanted Venom to play Black today. Black metal. Yeah, man. It's going to be cool. I wanted them to play today, man. I was like, I totally know, I sorry. That, that would have been. What happened? He was supposed to go on. I don't know. That would have been. Peace to Venom, though. But, uh, yo, what else? I wanted to ask you. I think it's really important. Um, yeah, you guys got a new video out, right? Yeah. For old, right? Yeah. And, um, it's a great song, great video, man. Check it out. It's got a really cool concept, man. Talk about it. Um, basically, it's just, uh, it's basically like kind of what the lyrics are about. It's like a modern day Jesus. Like if he came, like if Jesus came, you know, when Jesus came back down during the day, back in the day and stuff, it was kind of like, everybody was like, whoa. And, uh, we was just kind of tripping. Like it was our first attempt at a concept video. So we didn't really know which way to take it. But I think we did it really well. It's like if he came back today, people wouldn't even notice it. You know, if he came back today, he'd be shot. That's what the first line says. I totally agree, man. It's, it's weird. It's a, it's a real cool analytical view on uh, modern day society. And those are, you know, that's, that's the type of thing in music that I respect the most, man. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, I think you guys are going to be the, the biggest thing you know, out, man. Yo, you gotta hit Machine Head, pick up their stuff, check out their videos, check out their uh, album and everything. And check them out here live on the Headbangers Ball, yo. Yeah. Shut it up!
can we say that was fucking amazing Ooh. typo negative live and you can see that on mtv in europe i'm evan from biohazard i'm here with the fellows from typo negative some guys i know for a long time uh going back to the uh carnivore days my god yeah. it's been a very long time uh me and evan have a long history long and illustrious yes yeah. standing here to my right peter Steele. Yeah, and we got uh me and his kenny over here it's kenny Hickey. over here we got Infamous Josh Silver, producer slash, uh, I don't know, master of gas, and uh, Johnny Kelly. What can you say? I don't I know. Say much. Uh, these guys are so negative, they really don't have anything to talk about. Let's talk about your new album. You guys working on a new record? What's happening? That's correct. Yes, I have some ideas, which I'm sure that I can exploit into a money-making opportunist reality for the record company so that we can make someone rich, not necessarily us. Well, that would be a certain reality of the music business I can certainly relate to. Uh, Kenny, tell us about um, tell us about this tour you've just been on. Queen's Rake. No, the whole thing. How long you guys been on the road? Uh, 16 months. We're at each other's throats already. Has there been any good fist fights? Look at his arms. Look at his arms. Uh, what do you no think good fist fights. The local cat did this. <laughs> Yeah. Was the, uh, we was have a pet bobcat on the bus. <laughs> really? Okay, really? very good. Typo negative, what can you say? Uh, Josh Silver, keyboard uh, extraordinaire. Tell me, 
Well, how do you guys stay sane on the road? Because I know we, we've been on the road for 14 months ourselves. We're back for like, we're in month 15. You guys are about a month ahead of us. What do you guys do to, to stay, keep it together in, in, in the head, you know? Well, I recommend two joints, 1.5 milligrams of Xanax spread over six hours and 18 hours of sleep. And a Valium afterwards to wake up. To each his own, I'm living a straight edge. So uh, you're here with type of negative, Dynamo, open air, 95, and uh, we're gonna go to some nonsensical commercials that really don't mean anything at all, and then we're gonna see some Paradise Lost, so take it easy, peace. Greetings and welcome back to the Headbangers Ball. This is to be the final segment of the Headbangers Ball. We're here with Paradise Lost, who's headlining uh, today, Saturday, tomorrow, Biohazard, who's been bringing you this Headbangers Ball live from Dynamo. It was uh, closing Dynamo Festival tomorrow on Sunday. So let's have a word with uh, Greg and Nick from uh, Paradise Lost. All right. How are you guys doing? No bad, right. how are you? Okay, yeah, what do you guys think of all this Dynamo hype and hoopla? We love it. We, we love it. It's lovely. We haven't been here very long. We just arrived about half an hour ago, but the weather could be a bit nicer. But apart from that, it's, it's great. Yeah. You guys missed a lot of good bands today. Madball set it off really early, right. and uh, you know, Fear Factory and the L Bombs have been another day. Group Incorporated right now. Dave Lombardo's on. Um, so you got a new, new album coming out, uh, Draconian Times. Tell me a little about it. Yeah, um, it comes out June 12th. It's uh, it's kind of just an extension of what we did on the Icon album. It's not really drastically different. It's just better. Not much you can say about it really, you've got to listen to it, you know. It's kind of varied, I suppose. It's our best album to do it by far, but very good, I'm biased, so. You know, uh, I come from the States, and um, you know, it, when I, I watch the scenes very carefully over here and over there, and I, I see, you know, metal is not so big in the States as much as it used to be, but I come over to England and over to Europe, and I just see Paradise Lost t-shirts everywhere. You guys are large over here, and much success. Uh, what, what's gonna happen with the touring here, with the summer and uh, the new album? A lot, lots of festivals and stuff. I mean, this is the first one that kicks off, and then we're going to do like I don't know, probably about 20 more festivals all throughout Europe, and um, then probably tour in September onwards. Paradise Lost live right now from Dynamo Open Air. This is Biohazard. I'm Evan, bringing you to Headbangers Ball live from Dynamo Open Air. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Keep banging your head. It's a struggle when the failure's brown And it crashes in front of me I see the clouds divide You fucking see I try to leave The time you're looking at the door And you're thinking to walk right through I want to ignore I only wish that it passes so Oh!
is. Yo, you just checked out Paradise Lost. This is Biohazard setting it off, finishing up the Biohazard special report of Headbangers Ball Dynamo 95. I want to wish everybody peace. Thank you for tuning in. Dynamo is the most important festival in Europe right now at this time. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you, MTV. Thank you, Headbangers Ball. And thank you, everybody out there, for giving us an opportunity. We wish you peace and God bless you. And uh, check you. out the Kerrang Awards next week. Until then, peace. Later. Everybody on the dance floor. Everybody on the dance floor, yo. Everybody on the dance floor. Everybody on the dance floor, yo. Everybody on the dance floor. Here I go. This bad flow. Got this hole to never get this hole. Yeah!
Yeah, what's up, yo? 